Welcome, folks. I am Jabby Kuwait, joined by Achara Kirk. What's up? And we are back with another reaction to The Odd Ones Out. This video is called Buying Clothes. And so I really, really, really enjoyed the first one we did, which is uh, My Girlfriend is Kind of Odd. I think that's the name of his video. Yes, yes. And I thought it was brilliant, and I was very much looking forward to doing another one. And here we are, finally, again, Buying Clothes. Thank you, The Odd Ones Out, for allowing us to react to this. Very, very much appreciate it, y'all. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up, please, so that YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. And while you're subscribing and upvoting, subscribe to Odd Ones Out as well. There's a link in the description below for the original video that we're about to watch. Here we go. Hey man, have you ever noticed that we wear the exact same clothes every day? We don't... We don't wear any clothes. What if we're both just a cartoon character and that's why our clothing's the same? That's impossible. Cartoon characters' mouths move. We just open our mouths and words start coming out. <laughs> Hey guys, did you see my brand new Rolex? <laughs> Are you jealous? Doesn't your phone tell the time? Maybe he never noticed that his phone has a clock in it. <sighs> no one buys a Rolex to tell the time. That's I true, can't actually. Even read this. People buy Rolexes to indirectly tell everyone how much money we can throw away on useless objects. Hey, look what my watch can do. I mean, you we, used we, to be well, able we'll to just tell the time on your watch. Bought. What do you buy? A watch. Really? <laughs> What a nerd. Oh, Brian. Okay, what he's saying there is, there's a lot of validity to what he's saying there. I don't think anyone uses a Rolex to tell the time. No, not today, but I'm saying like in the past, uh -huh. they would have. My, okay. I'm going to sound super fancy, but my dad got a Rolex when he was 21. Uh -huh. Now, this isn't like the super fancy Rolexes that are, you know, like all gold or whatever. This is like a very basic watch on a leather strap. It was like a lovely gift, a 21st birthday gift. Back in those days, yeah, you didn't have like a cell phone to read the time. I don't think this video is talking about people from 30. Hold on. 50 years ago. <laughs> Over 50 years Yeah, I, ago, I don't yeah. think this video is in reference to that audience. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is more focused on, you know, people in their teens and 20s and maybe their 30s. I'm just saying, you know, yeah. you can read the damn time on a watch, okay? It's not for that anymore. It's just a flex. It, people yeah. with those clocks on their wrists, it's just a flex. Like, look what I got. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. Bling. Do, today, if Yo. you're playing with an expensive watch, it really is just to go, I have so much expendable income. Let me just throw it on that. I'm the kind of person who doesn't really care about my outward appearance. A lot of times in high school, we talk about having a healthy self-image of ourselves, and teachers would say stuff like, don't listen to the people who call you ugly. You're beautiful. <laughs> and all I could think was, there's people saying I'm ugly? <laughs> For the most part, I haven't really tried to even learn anything about fashion. Most of the time when I get dressed in the morning, I wear just whatever's the cleanest. Like, I don't even know my pants size because I wear basketball shorts all the time. <laughs> I think... I'm a medium. What he just said, I relate to a lot because every time I book an acting job, they're like, uh, what's your shirt size? And I go, uh, medium. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Because uh, like, I used to know my neck and arm measurements and stuff, but it's like every time I say it, they're like, oh yeah, that's not right. I go, okay. No, it's never right. It's yeah. never right when you give them the measurements. So just like give them a rough estimate, show up on set and be like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I am 100% on board with that parenting technique. I think even the super, super rich parents should still make their kids buy their own clothes. <laughs> because if you just buy your child anything they want, then they're going to turn into a-holes who just expect everything without having to work hard. Those are the types of kids who grow up to flex all their money on people and who leave their basketball cards all over the cramped dorm. And also, buying your own clothes makes you think harder about what you're going to spend your precious dollars on. You don't want to waste your money, so you have to pick clothes you really like. <laughs> you Except my Hold on, did you see the style? I like anime. I don't know what that thing is in the middle, an owl? I don't know. And then the third one is a chew. Yeah, that's making fun of Supreme. Like, I've been pick doing that. He's been doing that throughout. Yeah. Clothes you really like. Except my mom told me I couldn't buy anything with skulls on them. She said they were too edgy. And you know what? Her exact Fair words. enough, mom. <laughs> Looking back, I'm glad I skipped that emo edgy phase. But why didn't you let me express my true self, mom? Thank you for not letting me do that. In the seventh <laughs> grade, I went through an I need to look cool phase. And one time, I saved up quite a bit of money, so me and my mom went on a shopping spree at Kohl's. Hashtag not sponsored. I was going to impress everyone. I was going to look so cool with my brand new two pairs of jeans. I'll get this normal blue pair, and then the exact same pair, just in case I spill ketchup on the first pair. That's another reason why I'm pro have your kids pay for their own clothes. So that way they learn how expensive clothes shopping is. 
Seriously, two pairs of jeans was $70. Do you know how many Pokemon cards I could have bought? Probably enough to make my own pair of Poke Pants. I am of the thinking that if I find something I really like and it fits me, I'm buying two of them. Or more, especially if there's a sale. Like, a Char has watched me clear out a section at Target where they have these shirts for like eight bucks and I'm like, oh, these are nice shirts for eight bucks. I can't believe they're only eight bucks. All of them are mine. <laughs> I know, I'm like, uh, Chubby, what if you got bored? I will never get bored of these clothes. I still wear them to this day. I know. And so, I mean, some of them have worn themselves out and have been tossed, but still, like, I have made the most out of those shirts. And then jeans, he said two for 70 bucks. I'm like, that's very Dude, reasonable. That's extremely reasonable because I've seen like one pair of jeans for two hundred dollars. Yeah. So that's when I learned about the magical land of Goodwill. <laughs> At Goodwill, you could buy mediocre, questionably stained looking jeans for a fourth of the price of Kohl's. That's true. You're at Goodwill and everything's half off. That's like a double sale, people. Here's the thing. <laughs> Typically, clothes stores have a certain style they specialize in. Tilly's, you know you're gonna get that hip LA style clothes. At Old Navy, you know you're gonna get that white boy, white boy Ohio look. And H&M, you know you're gonna get Demonetized. But what? Wait, <laughs> what, wait, what's that about? I don't know if this is what he's talking about, but there was a whole thing where, like, ages ago, I think they came out with some questionable children's clothing. If I remember correctly, they got a black kid to wear a shirt with, like, a gorilla on it. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Like okay, that. yeah, it was a very controversial Yeah, thing. it was controversial. No, I remember so that. that. That's why. I, I think maybe it was something like that. Well, with regards to Goodwill, I have a, a bone to pick with them. There's nowhere to leave the stuff if you don't make it within the hours, which is the stupidest thing. I understand that they have probably have reasons for it and whatnot, but it's not like they have the time to really check out your bag when you drop it off anyway. When you drop off clothes, they're like, what is it? What's in here? Clothes. Okay, here's your ticket if you want this for your tax purposes. Bye. They're not actually inspecting it when they receive it. So why can't there just be like a dump bucket of some kind where, where people can drop their stuff if they're leaving it for goodwill? There was one instance where I went like one minute after closing, literally a minute after closing, I showed up with a bag full of really good clothes that I was trying to give to Goodwill, not like the thing he was describing. So I dropped it outside the door and the lady's like, you can't leave that there, there's loitering. I'm like, well, can I hand it to you? She literally opened the door. She's like, you can't leave that there, there's loitering. I go, well, can I hand it to you? She goes, no, because we're closed. I go, Okay, well, I'll just leave it here. She goes, that's loitering. You can't leave it here. You got to take that with you. I go, well, I'll just throw it away then. She goes, okay. What? They don't care. Yeah, they don't care. It's they like they care. get so much. They, they are so degaff mode. It's like you'd think that with this being such a huge corporation, because it is a corporation, you'd think that there would be an area where you can just drop off stuff. No, I, I know that there are boxes. Certain supermarkets have them where you can put your old clothes and shoes. Like yeah. they do have them, but yeah, I don't know why Goodwill doesn't. But on another note, a cool thing about going to stores like Goodwill or, or thrift shops, if you go to them in an expensive neighborhood, you can actually find really good things for a really good deal. No joke, okay? okay? Like I went to the Goodwill in, uh, where was it? In Los Feliz, you know, lots of fashionable rich people. I got some really great clothes that I still wear to this day. Inside your local Goodwill, you don't know what you're getting. You get every style of clothing all in one place. I got my favorite t-shirt from Goodwill. Yeah. I even wore it to this panel at VidCon. You know, the panel where I didn't even talk into the microphone. <laughs> you couldn't hear half of it. <laughs> ah, but James, I don't want to wear clothes that have already been worn by other people. They are gross. Ugh, cuties and herpes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's true, that's true. You don't know who else has worn your clothing, but then again, you could be wearing something that was also worn by the odd ones out. <laughs> That's right, I donate my clothes to Goodwill. Reduce, reuse, recycle, baby. Why would someone make a pair of pants out of Pokemon cards? <laughs> <laughs> and give it away. I'm not saying don't buy expensive clothing. <laughs> buy whatever you want to buy and can't afford. If there's two shirts, one is $40 and one is $5, and you really, really like the $40 shirt and hate the $5 one, you should get the $40 shirt because you'll end up wearing it more often. Exactly. So you get more use out of it. Price per In wear. economics, there's a term used to measure how much happiness a product will give you, and it's called utils. Sometimes buying more expensive things will give you more utils of happiness, so it's worth it to buy expensive clothing. But for me, I get way more utils buying a shirt for $5. I think it all depends. I'm, I kind of agree with him. I think that I'm more inclined to wear the cheaper shirts because they're cheaper. And yeah. I don't, because I am such a klutz when it comes to eating. I always get food on my shirt. Even the other day, I ruined a t-shirt because I was brushing my teeth. <laughs> like, I think I was doing something dumb. Like, I was I was playing with my phone while I was brushing my teeth. And then the toothbrush slipped out of my, out of my mouth, out of my hand. And it went all over my... <laughs> 
because it's an electric toothbrush. I'm like, bonk. Damn it! I tried Jordan's trick, your brother-in-law. I tried his trick of like taking the shirt off right away and like quickly scrubbing it out yeah. and then hanging it up to dry. And when I took it down, it's like pockets of white all over. I'm like, God dang it. I just, that's ruined. Good thing it didn't cost me much. I think this is an arbitrary thing. And the smarter recommendation is to convince yourself that you bought a $5 shirt for 40. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, maybe. But also the thing about the expensive thing is whenever I'm buying something that is uh, like a piece of clothing or something that is expensive, I always think about cost per wear. Because if I buy a cheap thing that you know, it's like $20, but I wear it once. But if I buy like an expensive pair of jeans that was like $100, but I wear it to death over the course of uh -huh. however many years, it's going to be way cheaper over time. You cannot put a price on all the oodles and oodles of oodles I get for wearing a shirt I like for $5. Sure. You can wear your Supremes and your Amber Crombos or whatever all you want. I just don't think it makes a lot of sense spending <laughs> that much money on a white t-shirt with an ironed-on logo. I know. There's no I material in that shirt that makes it as expensive as it is. Yep. Oh, never mind. Okay. What you're really <laughs> doing is paying for the name brand. Yes. So you might as well staple two $20 bills to your shirt and write in Sharpie, Look, everyone, I got $40. But again... If you like the design of a white shirt and a red rectangle, then you be happy wearing it. I'm not telling you what, what? to wear. Wait, Hold what? Hold on. Did it say? I need to read that. I'm happy wearing this piece of clothing. Wearing nice clothes makes me feel confident. I will not let the opinions of some guy on YouTube make me feel bad for wearing expensive clothes. I understand that not everyone can afford expensive clothing or they choose not to wear these types of clothes and I will not judge them differently for doing so. I'm not telling you what to wear, but I will tell you this. Don't judge someone based on their clothing. That's like the most shallow thing a person can do. Even if someone is wearing old hand-me-downs or a really expensive name brand t-shirt, don't treat people differently because of their clothing. Yeah. There's a certain YouTuber going around, I'm not gonna say any names, but I will draw pictures, who's teaching kids that their value as a person is correlated to the amount of money they spend on clothing. Don't do that. Okay, real talk over now. School uniforms! People who support school uniforms say that uniforms are better because then the students don't have to think about what they're gonna wear the next day. So, okay, I wanna address that thing he said real quick. I don't think it should matter what you wear and you should not be judged for what you wear. I agree with that. However, you are judged for what you wear and that's a fact. I mean, especially in big cities like Los Angeles and New York, when you show up wearing something like that's Armani, versus $10 suit store, people can spot the difference and they will judge you accordingly and they will talk to you or treat you accordingly. It's even highlighted in Grand Theft Auto, which is very interesting when you're driving around in some regular Honda looking car or just a regular economy car, right? Yeah. No one's talking to you. When you show up in a Lambo, you hear people from the street going, oh my God, you call me, hey, and people are like nice to you. Right. And that's just how things are. And I think that's how things have always been. It's almost like peacocking, you know? Sure. No, but I think you can also still kind of present yourself well without having to buy super expensive clothes That's either. Right. You can buy cheaper clothes that fit you nicely and make you look great. Because everyone has to wear the same outfit. But like, I already don't think about what I'm wearing. That's probably why I'm naked right now. Okay, <laughs> that's not entirely true. I'm not just going to walk outside wearing a... I don't know, a pink poncho. I have standards. I just buy all the cheap clothing I think looks nice. In high school, I mostly wore solid color V-neck t-shirts. And That's one good. time a kid on the very last day of school told me, James, you always wear solid color V-neck t-shirts. You're like a cartoon character. That's what I'm going for. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a cartoon. I don't think you realize how much I love cartoons. <laughs> one time I bought those shoes with the really fat tongues. I thought they looked cool, but they certainly didn't feel cool. They didn't have any support for my soul. I couldn't go running in them, so what was even the point? And apparently you're not supposed to tie the laces of those shoes. I'm not sure. Someone just told me, hey man, you know you're not supposed to tie the laces of those shoes, right? So I had to bury the laces inside my shoe, and I was constantly stepping on the oh, sharp Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And all the cool kids saw my shoes and said, hey James, those are some pretty fat tongues you got there. Do you wanna come sit at our lunch table? And I said, no, being cool sucks. <laughs> so now I wear tennis shoes everywhere. <laughs> some of you watching are in seventh or eighth grade right now. And you might be going through your own, I need to look cool phase. And I just wanna to say to you little youngins, you don't need to impress or prove yourself to anyone. Wear whatever makes you happy and that you can afford. And you still have to follow the school's dress code, which is the whole other can of worms. I'm not encouraging anyone to break the rules, okay? <laughs> All I'm saying is, at the end of the day, what really matters is that you're in seventh grade. 
Nothing you do will make you cool. I I'm sorry. <laughs> Everyone regrets seventh grade, okay? Just start putting on deodorant, do the homework, you'll get through this. Oh man, what a neat video that I made. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, that was cute. Very cute. Yeah, I mean, you're still figuring yourself out. Yeah. You know, it's at seventh grade, you, you really don't know who you are yet. I had the senses to the things the scope of interest that I had, but like me as a person, I was still evolving. I mean, you're a kid. I was a super dork in seventh grade. Yeah. I'd also just skipped sixth grade. Right. So like, I was like mega, mega nerdy. I do appreciate what he's trying to do with this video, which is like beyond the comedy and whatnot that he's injecting into this and yeah. talking about his experiences and whatnot. He's also trying to pass along a message that you don't need to be obsessed with buying crazy expensive brands just to impress other people. I think that is out there a lot because there are YouTubers who are highly influential on young people and they probably do present themselves that way. Yeah, and I think ultimately the other thing he says that he was talking about, like the utils of happiness or whatever, it's like if buying that thing really, 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 really does make you happy and like you can afford to buy it, and you want to buy it, then okay, buy it. Yeah. But don't feel like you have to because you have to prove something to someone, you know what I mean? Yeah, I kind of experience that all the time. What do you mean? With dumb stuff. For instance, when, with the PS5, I had an option between the Samsung SSD and the Western Digital SSD. And each of them had their own heatsink built into it. Uh -huh. And so I was like, okay, which one do I get? And the Samsung was significantly cheaper. And the difference in speed between the two of them wasn't all that much, uh -huh. but because of the price of the Western Digital, I'm like, I want that one though. <laughs> I <laughs> gotta have that one. More expensive equals better. And then so when I'm playing on my PlayStation 5, I'm like, yep, I had the best experience ever. <laughs> Way better than that stupid Samsung. If I was being more objective and smart about it, I probably would know that I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two experiences, between the Samsung and the Western Digital, but I thought that it looked cooler, even though I'm never gonna look at it, and the ratings were better for the speed of one. I'm like, oh, I'll just get the more expensive one. But, and that happens sometimes. I try to think like that where if the more expensive thing is gonna make me happy at the end of the day, just go for it. Like, I try not to like hum and haw about it with myself emotionally and go, ugh, because I find that sometimes when you get into that thinking, you end up spending more time debating with yourself about this deal that you maybe should or shouldn't get rather than right. just getting it and moving on to the next thing. Yeah. You know, and it depends on you and where you are in life. Let's say you're someone who makes 20 bucks an hour. You're a grown up who makes 20 bucks an hour. If you spend four hours debating whether or not you should buy a $10 shirt, you've wasted 80 bucks. Right. You know, it's like, just move on. Get the thing and move on. But anyway, uh, that's it for now, you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you again to the Odd Ones Out for allowing us to react to this. Very, very much appreciate it. Y'all, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up, please, to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. I'm Jabby Kway. This is... Achara Cook. Peace out.